y'all. This is Nina with NinaSouthernAccents.blogspot.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today I am participating in a blog hop with the Let's Get Hopping crew, and our challenge was to make uh, a card that was not a standard size card. So, um, today I'm going to share with you how I made this neat money holder. And hopefully it will give you an idea to get started on some holiday Christmas gift giving. And you can adapt this to use for any occasion uh, that you want to give a check or money. You can make it um, for a wedding, for birthday, graduation, anything like that. But I'm going to show you how to make this card and the matching envelope. So... These are this is what you're going to need and I'm going to be showing you some new product from the 2018 holiday catalog. The stamp set that we're going to be using is the Farmhouse Christmas with the Farmhouse Framelit dies. And this was one of the first sets that I ordered. It was on my Christmas list. I love this truck. We're not using the truck in the card, but um, anyway, but this farmhouse suite is just beautiful, and it comes with these farmhouse framelit dies. Now, a little tip. I have purchased these magnet sheets off of Amazon. They're five by seven, and I just put the um, stamps that have matching bundles or matching framelits, I go ahead and put them in with the stamp, and whenever something is bundled, you get you save 10%. So if you purchase the die and stamps together, then you're going to save 10%. But this is one of the sets that we're going to be using. We're also going to be using the cable knit embossing folder. We're going to be using the stitched shape framelit dies and if you're just getting started, this is a great die set to purchase because you get four of each different shapes and um i think it's only thirty dollars i'll have to double check you can look in the description below then we're also going to be using the layering circle framelits and it comes this one comes with 16 dies and it has the scalloped circle and the um regular shaped circles and i've already pulled out the two uh, framelits that we're going to be using. We're also going to be using our envelope punch board. Now this is one of the best deals in the catalog as well because you can do so much with this and it is only $20. So that is a fun thing to have. The ink colors that we're going to be using are the Cherry Cobbler and Gray Granite. I'm also going to be using the Cherry Cobbler and Gray Granite markers. I can't say enough about the Stampin' Write markers. Um, the Stampin' Blends are very popular, and I love the blends for th different things like coloring uh, and such. But you can't use those to color on your stamps, to give your stamps different colors. So, um... The Stampin' Write markers, you need those in your life, trust me. One thing that I have not shown you yet is the paper that comes in that farmhouse suite. And I am in love with this paper, so I'm going to show you this. Side. It's got some wood grain, some plaid in there, uh, another wood grain piece, um, and this. And then I'm going to flip it over. And this gives the back of it some stripes and checks. There's some some words. Um, beautiful, beautiful paper. I think I'm going to be ordering some more of this soon. But another tip that I wanted to give you, one way that I use to store my designer series paper is I purchased these um, sleeves. I think I got 10. And... I put all of my paper from um, one set in the sleeve and so when I have scraps I can stick it in the envelope as well and this keeps the designer series paper together and helps me stay organized because 
I need all the help I can get staying organized. Another thing that we're going to use on our card is this um, farmhouse, the striped burlap trim. And that is so beautiful. Our card we're making, we're going to do a little bit different version than this one. But the measurements and all are going to be the same, okay? So, what we've got... First of all, for your card base, you need a piece of cardstock, and I'm using gray granite because I went with what the colors that are in the designer series paper that I'm using. Let me get rid of that glare. I apologize for that. Um, so the gray granite piece that you need, or the piece of cardstock for your base, is going to be seven inches by eight and a fourth. You're going to need a piece of designer series paper. Cut two and five eighths by six and three fourths. And what I did, I with my twelve by twelve piece, I cut it at two and five eighths, and then the six and three fourths. We're going to save this extra piece because that's going to go on the outside of our envelope, like I did on this one. So save that piece for your envelope. You're also going to need a scrap of Whisper White. You're going to need a scrap of Cherry Cobbler, another scrap of Gray Granite, and then for our envelope that we're going to make, and the envelope punch board makes it so easy for you, I looked up my card size, and it tells me the paper size that I need. It's an 8.5 by 8.5 piece of um, card stock, and I'll show you how to make the envelope when we get started on that. So, that's for the envelope. Let me get everything to the side. The first thing that we're going to do is just take out our Simply Scored scoring tool. And we're going to score this on the um, 8 and 1 fourth side, okay? And we're going to score that at 3 inches and at 6 inches. Okay, and that's all the scoring that you need to do. Now, you see how one side is narrower? We're going to turn it this way, and we're going to take our envelope punch board, and you can see the ruler up here. We're going to line that up at three and a half inches, and we're just going to punch. All right, and it gives you that little divot. Now... What we're going to do is bring in our cutter and we're going to line that little divot up. It's e sometimes easier to see if you bring the, um, the cutter down. But you're just going to line that little divot up and you're going to cut up to that little divot. Oops, I didn't cut quite far enough. Okay. Just like that, okay? Now, we're going to turn it over, fold one end up, and use my bone folder so I get a nice crease. Just like that. And now, to secure this, we're going to use some tear and tape. So I'm going to put the tear and tape right here, and then the other piece of tear and tape here. This is about the strongest adhesive that Stampin' Up! sells. Alright, we're going to peel that end up. All right, and then we're just going to fold it up like that. And that makes our little money pocket. Then, we're going to decorate the outside. I'm taking that piece of designer series paper and my Tombow multi-purpose glue. Make sure you get it on the corners. 
and the glue you don't need to use a lot um, it's very sticky just center that up just like that so now we're gonna do some die cutting First of all, I want to stamp our sentiment. I've got my piece of Whisper White, and I'm going to use the Stamparatus. If you have not seen this, this is Stampin' Up's um, positioning tool. It came out in the annual catalog in 2018, and it is wonderful. Um, I hardly ever stamp without it. So what I've done... I've got my Merry Christmas stamp lined up. Actually, I'm going to move it because I was doing that with a different piece of paper. So, we're going to line that up about where we want to stamp it. And then we're going to fold over the uh, plate. And actually, the Stamparatus comes with two plates that you can do uh, different stamping. This is great for two-step stamping where you can line your stamps up and stamp one and then stamp the other. But today, I just need the... Um, the one plate. So here's where our markers come in. It says, wishing you a season, what is it, full of peace, wonder, and love, and then the Merry Christmas. So I want to do my Merry Christmas in Cherry Cobbler. So I'm going to take the, um, you don't want to just color with your tip. You want to use the side of your marker and just color that in. If you use the tip, it can damage your tip, but just use the side of your marker. Just like that. And color. And one thing that's great about the Stamparatus is if I don't have this inked up just right, I can always go back because it's going to stamp in the perfect place every time. Now I'm going to huff on it. That means just breathe. We're going to stamp down. Okay, you see some of these places here? I'm going to color that C again. Get that a little darker. My S didn't do too well. Let me just kind of do that Christmas over again. And if you get any on the words that you don't want, you can just wipe that off with your finger. Gonna huff again. Perfect placement every time. And you know what? I'm just gonna come in here. This is another advantage to having these markers. See how I'm just filling in? Alright. It looks rustic though, so I'm happy with it. Now I'm gonna come in with my gray granite. Actually, let me clean off the um, chamois that Stampin' Up! sells now. This is awesome. It's like this, and you see how dirty mine looks? All you do is you rinse it with water. Um, I keep mine laying in one of our uh, stamp cases, thin stamp cases. So now I'm going to just color these words. Remember, use the side of your marker. Using that gray granite. And I'm not worried if I don't get it perfect because with the Stamparatus, I can go back. Alright, let's see what we've got. Stamp down real good. You don't want to stamp too hard on these tiny words because it will... Um, so see, I need to go back over that. top did pretty good. But sometimes those tinier places, they'll splay out. Alright, now why aren't you doing right? It did good on my other card. You know, that's Murphy's Law. When you're shooting a video and you want it to go right, it's not going to do. So, 
there's my tag. And the Stamparatus comes with these magnets. They're very strong. So I'm just going to clean that stamp up. Now I'm going to bring out my Big Shot. And a lot of times when I've made videos, I um, talk about the Big Shot, but I don't really bring it out unless you see me use it. So you don't know how it works. So... The lighting isn't very good, is it? So this is the Big Shot. This is the platform that comes with your Big Shot. You've got the platform, the thin die adapter, and you get two cutting pads. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one out with the uh, stitch, stitched shape circle framelit. Y'all say that five times real fast. And then I don't know if you remembered on the envelope, uh, this little piece here, we're going to go ahead while we're cutting and bring out the little banner piece that comes in that stamp set. And I'm just going to set it right there. Make sure that stays centered up. All right, so this is, you always make a sandwich when you're using the Big Shot. It's, and when you're cutting, you use the... Um, platform, the thin die adapter, a uh, uh, cutting pad there, then your paper, the die, and then the top cutting pad, okay? And then you just crank it through. And this die is some more stitching. Stampin' Up! has some several has several dies that give us that beautiful stitching. So that's that. Now, I'll set that to the side. We want to cut out the, um, want to cut this out of the cherry cobbler because that's gonna go underneath. And then we're gonna cut our scallop circle out of this and I thought I could do this all in one pass but my paper's too wide so I'm just gonna go like this and then already on 17 minutes. I was hoping this wouldn't be a too long video because I know how I am. I don't have a lot of time to watch videos, but I did want to share all this stuff with you. So now we're going to use our embossing folder, that cable knit embossing folder. Let me put these dies up where I won't lose them. So this is the cable knit. Now to emboss, we have a different sandwich and this is a thick dynamic embossing folder. So we take away the thin die adapter and we take away one of the cutting pads. So all we have is our big shot platform, the cable knit, and I'm gonna put that in there where it's kind of even. And then we're gonna put on our top cutting pad. Oops. When you're doing the embossing folder, don't put um, the fold, the crease part on the edges. You want to keep it um, where it goes through because the edges can, if, if you send it through the edges, it can eat away at this and cause your embossing folder to break. And then there's that beautiful cable knit. And so I think... That's all of our work with the Big Shot. So let me put that away. All right, we're going to bring back our card. So now, you can see on my original card that this piece is a lot longer than this piece. Here's what you do. You just cut this piece in half and 
you're going to line it up just like this. Okay, you see how I did that? So now we've got to attach that down. So I know that that's pretty much where I want it. All right, glue. There we go. All right, now I'm just double checking to make sure we kind of want things centered up. So I'm going to leave that uh, circle there until I get ready to put this piece down. And that looks pretty even. Just like that. Okay. Now I told you we were going to use some of this burlap ribbon. And I just wanted... A little bit, so I'm going to cut it under that circle. Here again, we're going to use the tear and tape. I'm just going to lay that down. Lay our ribbon over that. Okay. Here's our piece we stamped. We're going to glue that down. Just like that. I got to keep reminding myself to do this where y'all can see me. Okay. You see just a little hint of that ribbon peeking through. So now we're going to grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm just going to use two. Do those there. Now you see why I try to have stuff cut out and prepared ahead of time because the video just goes extra long if you don't. So there. Now, let's make that envelope real quick. So I've got my envelope punch board. And like I said, over here you've got these measurements and down here it tells you what um, to do, what size paper you're going to need. And then I'm going to punch it. I need, my card size is 3 by 7 and so my paper size is 8 and a fourth by 8 and a fourth and I'm going to score it at 2 and 3 fourths. So here's my ruler up here and this comes with its own little bone folder so... Let's see, two and three fourths. So I'm going to punch and score. Now, that's the only measurement I have to use. I'm going to flip my paper around. I'm going to line this up with the little um, tab that sticks out there. I'm going to score, punch. All right, I've got it lined up. I'm going to punch. Four. And then I'm going to punch and score. All right. And so now you can see how the envelope comes together. But when you put your envelope together, there's a little extra piece. So I want the scissors I want. So I'm just going to, if you if you want to be real exact, you can put this in your paper trimmer. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to do like that. And we're going to fold on these score lines. Fold that piece down. We're going to have to do the same thing on that piece. Just kind of snip it. Now, more tear and tape. And we're just going to put them on these little pieces that fold in right here. And peel those pieces off. There 
There we go. We're going to fold that up. Now, remember that piece I told you to save to the side? Now, see, I probably will go back. See, that's uneven there. I will probably go back with my paper trimmer and just cut that and make it even. So, we're going to take this piece and glue it down here. Just kind of center it up. And then our white piece goes here to put the recipient's name on. Just like that. And so now, and of course, you can uh, decorate this however you want to. You can even add some more, a strip of DSP down here if you wanted to. And here is our card and matching envelope ready for Christmas. Look at here, y'all. I have got two Christmas gifts ready to go. I am so proud of me. All I got to put do is now find the money to go in here, right? So, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and to my blog so you don't miss any projects. Like I said, I love to share my love of stamping and paper craft with you. Um, and comment and let me know how you like the Farmhouse Christmas, um, what you think about the suite. Uh, Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.